I decided after pondering over it some time that I wanted to do a second part to my last video uh, because I, I, I believe it's really going to shed some light on some things uh, from many aspects, from many, many aspects. Uh, one in particular is the importance of who you're learning from. This is very, very important about who you're learning from and who the who these ones, uh, especially as it regards to false teachers and false pre preachers. Now, I have myself uh, a very full and rich educational background as far as it relates to. I, I've attended uh, a couple of Christian academies. I've gone through uh, Baptist Academy and different things and such. Uh, I've gone through college, you know, Christian courses and all of that. I've done Catholic Academy. I've done Jewish. I mean, I, I've done it all. I've had to go through it all. My background actually began at four years old. This is when I began before I could even really read learning scripture and it was taught to me by my family, by my mother, my father, my grandfather. You know, th this is the background. And this is the background that many uh, many in the Jewish religion have. You know, this is why they have to have a bar, uh, bar mitzvah. Young boys have to have a bar mitzvah. Their religious education starts at a very young age, an extremely young age. They have to find themselves approved and be tested by church leaders, you know, to be able to have their bar mitzvah. So I felt it prudent and a great opportunity, especially with that last video with Robin Bullock and the, the previous videos I've done on him, uh, to give a deeper understanding, take, take the why it's so important to have a broad perspective and a broad understanding as a whole when it comes to the Bible. So if you look at it from an economic level, you could kind of consider my last teaching, you know, the last video was on a microeconomic level, and I'm going to do this teaching uh, on a macro economic level, a macro perspective versus micro perspective. So we addressed one word, and I'm going to I'm going to give a little bit more understanding with that last video. So <clears throat> in mistranslating that one single word Robin Bullock takes an entire message and teaches it out of context, out of the biblical context. And when you read and learn the Bible the things that are not spoken are just as important as the spoken word itself. The things that you get. Remember, the Bible speaks to us. You know, it's the holy word of God. It speaks to us. There are unspoken understandings in Scripture that we can learn in our daily lives. So, the last video was about how Adam, you know, God made Adam to toil at the ground by the sweat of his nose, the sweat of his brow, and I want to give you a better understanding of that. You know, at the, in those days, before the days of Noah, it didn't rain. So the reason that had to be so, that as Adam toiled at the ground and the sweat rolled off of his nose, that water, remember what Scripture says, Revelation seventeen fifteen: you are the water, the peoples, nations, multitudes, and tongues. So as that sweat rolled off of Adam's nose, as he toiled into the ground, toiled and worked at the ground, because there was no rain, that water, that sweat, helped to nourish the ground. And remember what Scripture also says, you are the salt of the earth. And the earth, you know, the ground, salt gives the earth nourishment. It gives it certain minerals and nutrients. So it's the sweat and the salt that came out of Adam that helped water the seeds that he planted. Very important to know that. That's the, the meaning, the un deeper meaning understanding, the uh, broader macro understanding in that, that message. 
and what needs to be relayed and understood. <clears throat> and this further goes to give a better understanding about what happened with Cain and Abel, Adam's and Eve's two sons, Cain and Abel. So Cain, of course, murdered Abel, but to have a better understanding of why, a full and complete understanding of why, it wasn't just because Abel gave a a perfect sacrifice as opposed to Cain. There was much more to it. So Abel continued the tradition and the burdens that were placed upon him uh, by God, which was the toil at the earth by the sweat of his brow, by, or excuse me, by the sweat of his nose. So Abel continued the tradition and what God demanded of man, whereas Cain did not want to do this. He, he wanted to be upright. He wanted to be seen as righteous. You know, Abel continued to bow at the ground and toil at the ground as God said to do after the fall. But Cain did not want to do that. His prideful nature uh, he didn't want to have to do that. He didn't want to give God the all the glory that he deserved. So he wanted to stand upright and rule over animals, which was, you know, Adam and Eve's first mission. That was their first appointment was to just basically see over the animals in the garden. That's what Cain wanted to do. Whereas Abel did what was commanded by God after the fall. Cain did not want to do that. So that gives you a broader picture. And this is why you have to understand the, the micro of things so you can understand it on a macro level. You can get the broad picture. You can understand it from a broad spectrum. The whole story falls into a picture, just like hieroglyphs. They draw a bunch of pictures that ultimately manifests itself into a picture as a whole, a story that unfolds, a living word that unfolds that you can use in your daily lives. That's really important. So <clears throat> after addressing a little bit of that, the other point I wanted to make was the fact that Robin Bullock... <sighs> Of course, I've shown two different, I have two different videos on this that Robin Bullock even stated that it was Moses that threw down his rod before Pharaoh and, and it became a snake. And that's actually a falsehood too. It was Aaron that threw down his rod before Pharaoh and it become the serpent. And this is a very important mis, mis, uh, or mis teaching because I've learned over the years that so many people are, have been mistaught that it was Moses. And this is why it's so important to learn or be learning from people who truly know what the scripture says. Because if you don't learn that it was Aaron that threw down his staff before Pharaoh first, then you don't get the whole picture. And the whole picture actually unfolds itself in three different books. You have to read the book of Exodus, the book of Leviticus, and the book of Numbers to get that overall picture of what happened with Aaron. And this is why it's important to know the history of not just Moses, but especially Aaron. Aaron was found approved by God. He was given his own powerful staff that had incredible powers. And, and if you read through those three full books, you will, you will get this full picture. And this is why I think a lot of people have been taught to misteach this. Because I think they don't want you to get the whole perspective of Aaron. So Aaron, the story as it in, unfolds in those three books, you'll see that Aaron was found to prove, and he was from the tribe of Levi. His staff was the, the staff of Levi. It was found to prove, if you read the whole story, I won't get into that because this would be a two-hour video. Uh Aaron was found approved and righteous 
uh, and appointed by God, but over time, and this is why you miss that, why many people have missed that, because they, they were taught that it was only Moses that was a righteous man. Aaron was a righteous man at one point too, but he had fell from grace at a point. Uh, one instance in particular was uh, when Moses went up on the mount for 40 days to receive the tablets and came back down, it was Aaron and his other ministers that had helped to convince the people to build a false idol, the golden calf. So Aaron was at one time righteous, but he fell many times and he continued to fail in the eyes of God. And not only that, at a certain point, his staff was actually taken away from him. His powerful staff, and this is another misteaching, a lot of people have been taught that it was Moses' staff that was placed in the Ark of the Covenant, and it was not. It was the staff of Aaron that was placed in the, the Ark of the Covenant, and the reason it was done so, because Aaron had fell from the grace he had fallen from his righteousness. So Moses took away his staff and placed it in the Ark of the Covenant because he had not he, he was no longer worthy to wield that staff, to wield that power. And this is why I was able to come up with this new understanding that the Leviathans came, this is a direct relationship to the tribe of Levi and Aaron of those times. You know, you had the Leviathans, just like you had the Corinthians and the Thessalonians. So this is where the understanding of the Levi, the tribe of Levi, Levi Athens, is derived in their understandings. Uh, and, and again, the, the Leviathans taught of in Job chapter 41, you'll see that the armor that that the Leviathan has is similar, has similar properties to the armor of God that's found in Ephesians 6. It does have similar properties, and the reason it has similar properties because these ones, these Leviathans, parade themselves around as men that are righteous and upright when they are not. They are, in fact, false teachers and false Prophets, these. this is where my understanding and new understanding of what a Leviathan actually is comes from, having a broader overall understanding of the Holy Word of God. <clears throat> so to finish it up, if you continue to read about Levi and his uh, lineage, I think you'll kind of read, I think you'll find it, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Leviticus chapter 10, where Levi, uh, Aaron's two sons had even went in and burned a foreign fire and defiled the temple. You can read that in Leviticus 10, if I'm not mistaken, if memory serves me right. So... Because of his ways, you know, and, and what we learned, the old idiom about how the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. So his sons basically learned from him and ultimately defiled the temple. And his whole lineage ultimately ended up being cursed. And he started out as a very righteous and very powerful man that was anointed by God. But the lesson to learn behind that and what I think, why I think many people don't teach this is because that even a righteous man, he can be found righteous in the beginning. If he doesn't continue that walk, that path with God and walk with God in the truth, in the word, and in the Holy Spirit, then he will fall. He will lose his righteousness. He would lose his anointing and authority. And you see that in the story. You get a broader picture when you read it. Again, you have to read the entire book of Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. It's a lot. It's a lot to read to get the broader picture of just Aaron. Just Aaron and his lineage, which was the tribe of Levi, the Leviathans, to give you a broader... And this is a one... 
one perspective that can be that is one of many that can be drawn out of those three books. Just one perspective. There's many perspectives. Again, Levi, you know, uh, understanding the Leviathans, that goes down a whole nother trail. So this is why it's so important to know Scripture on a micro level and on a macro level. Know the minute details of Scripture, but also know the the macro details so you have the smallest of understandings but you also have the the broadest of understanding you know the bigger the big picture can only be painted with one brush stroke at a time and the only way you can uh paint the bigger picture is to know how each brush stroke is painted and that's, I guess, the best uh, a theological perspective of understanding to give you. You have to know how to uh, start with small details before you can go to the broader picture. And again, like I said, these false teachers, they, they don't even know. They, ha they don't have a clue. And this is why it's important. You have to know that it was Aaron that had a great power similar to Moses, equal to Moses, but then ultimately over time, he fell from grace by his own actions. He fell from grace and lost that from his own behavior, which cursed his entire lineage. And that's a great teaching. That's a very good teaching because, you know, if you, you're not careful like Aaron, if you're not careful in your walk with God, and you don't follow the truth of the word and what it states, then you too can fall. And you've seen that with all these false prophets, Robin Bullock, all of them. They go against uh, everything that the word teaches. And even if they were righteous at one point in their lives, they're no longer righteous now. And that's just a fact because they don't teach anything close to what the Bible they teach. An opposing message, something that is completely opposite of what the Bible actually teaches. So that's just a little bit more, uh, a, a second video to help you to wrap your minds around the importance of knowing what Scripture says and the importance of knowing the teaching so that you can really know who you're learning from so that you can learn, you can know for sure that you're learning from somebody who is teaching the truth of the word who is trying to keep his walk in the walk of truth and righteousness because you know a lot of messages aren't always good you know and even Jesus said that you know if they hate you it's because they hated me first even Jesus said that and he was you know he was the word in flesh. He came as the word of God in flesh. So if he himself says, clearly pointed out, if they hate you, it's because they hated me first. So you know, the, the message, the word isn't always going to be pleasant because sometimes the truth is hard to swallow. Not always, but sometimes, especially for ones that aren't, aren't living uh like they should and we all fall none of us are perfect we all fall but again the scripture also says that even a righteous man falls seven times a day but it's a matter of how you pick yourself up and turn and, and dust yourself off do you pick yourself up and dust yourself off and begin to uh, continue to walk the path of righteousness in accordance to the word of god so I hope that was educational. I hope that helps you to have a better understanding. God bless.